Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial on getting started in text-based. This tutorial will go through the layout of the game, followed by how to complete the basic flight training mission. The layout is designed to be simple and is split into sections. At the top is a scrolling marquee of market information by default. Below this is a header showing your current location, which shows the body you're in orbit of, the body type and system name. This can also be clicked to toggle to your absolute spatial position. On the left edge are any missions that you have active along with the percent which they are complete. Towards the bottom of the screen is narrative text that describes the universe from your character's perspective. This includes things like ships entering the sector, bodies you're in orbit of, but can sometimes be your character speaking directly to you or speaking to other people you encounter in the universe. At the bottom left of the screen is your character's portrait. Clicking this will open the me window. And next to this are your ship details, and clicking this will open the tactical window. The me window is all centered around your character, such as skills and your statistics, whereas the tactical window is centered around your ship, such as fitting weapons or performing combat simulations. Next, we have the primary navigation that is split into different functional sectors. The cargo window shows the cargo on your ship. A drift cargo allows you to search for cargo nearby. The command window is centered around command operations, such as viewing ownership or giving orders. And the computer window is all about viewing and searching for data, such as searching for players or factions, or viewing global galactic information. The crafting window is for crafting things such as equipment, weapons and ships, as well as instructing factories to perform fabrication, refinement or synthesis. Next, we have the engineering window, which is all about engineering functions, such as viewing blueprints to build structures, building structures themselves, or repairing your ship. Next, we have the helm window, which is all centered around finding places to travel to, or actually traveling to those places. It also contains controls to view waypoints and to start exploration mode, where you can discover new systems. Next to this is the missions window, which as you might have guessed is centered around missions. You can view missions that are active, missions to accept, as well as colony requests, away missions you can send your crew on, and active events and jobs as well. And lastly, we have the services window. Structures in tech space that are within systems provide different services, such as trading services or forging services, and they're accessed by clicking on the services window here. Lastly, at the bottom right of the screen, we have a cog for opening the settings window. This is where you can change things such as volume control or the size of the scroll bar. Next to this, we have the chat bubble icon, which will open the chat window. Chat by default allows you to chat to any other player in the game, but you can change this to just chat with your faction members, as well as changing this to a log of all the actions you do in the game, and lastly, an inbox if you wish to send another player a direct message or respond to a direct message sent to yourself. We are now going to complete the first basic flight training mission. You can see this mission is assigned as it appears on the left and is 0% complete. Any missions that are assigned will appear here up to 5 and will be stacked. First of all, we need to view the mission details to understand the steps that we need to complete. To do this, we will open the missions window, which is in primary navigation at the bottom. Windows are pretty consistent in text space, and they consist of a total bar at the top, which has the close icon. Below this, it has secondary information. In this case, it's telling me I have one active mission, and there is also one active event in progress. Below this, we have the different section links of this window, which we can open up to view the section details. All windows by default when they're opened also have a table of contents explaining what each section contains. If we click the missions section link, this will open the mission section of this window. And we can see that we have one active mission assigned to us. This is the basic flight training mission that again is currently 0% complete. We can begin by viewing the details of the mission. In this case, the mission was issued by the Civilian Guild, which is an NPC faction and is of type basic flight training. We can see the outpost that issued this mission is 0.8 light years away, and it gives us a basic description of what this mission is all about. We can also see when this mission expires, in this case, seven months, and also if there are any requirements to complete this mission, which in this case, there are none. 
Below this, we have mission instructions. They give us instructions on how to complete this mission. And then we have the actual mission steps themselves. These are steps that we need to complete in order. And we can see the first step is not complete as the button is currently active and green. Then we have the mission rewards section, which details all the rewards we will be granted when we complete this mission. Some missions have special rewards, which are listed under the standard rewards. And then below this, we have mission FAQs, which help you understand all the mechanics that may be involved in the mission. Let's go ahead and complete the first step in this mission. The first step is to locate a training beacon. And it tells us the position of this beacon and how far away it is in light hits. When we click this, it opens the travel window and we can choose to either travel by sublight or FDL. In this case, because it's an arbitrary spatial position, we cannot use FDL as this is just traveling between systems. So we're going to use the sublight option. Sublight travel is an idle activity that takes time but uses no fuel, unlike FDL travel. FDL travel requires charge in your ship to be consumed, and charge is replenished by using fuel. Your ship will have a jump range, which is how far it can jump using FTL in one single bound. It will have a charge rate in minutes, which is how often it can recharge 0.1 light years of charge of your ship. And it will have a fuel rating of how much fuel it can carry. I click the Engage Sublight button. This will engage sublight travel. Like all activities in the game, there is a progress indicator of how far along the activity is. Because we are a new player, we have the new player starter bonus of travel time being 10 times faster. So we will actually get there before this indicator even gives us an ETA of how long it will take. Now that we have entered the specified position in the mission brief, we can see that the mission percentage has now increased to 25%, indicating that a step has been completed in the mission. If we click into the mission details, we can see that the first step of locating the training beacon has been automatically complete, and the next step to deliver the training beacon is now required. The training beacon will be a drift cargo, so we need to open the cargo window, which is the window for seeing cargo on board your ship, detecting a drift cargo and searching for cargo. If we select a drift cargo, we can see in the consumable section there is now a training beacon. We can see the name of this consumable, which is Training Beacon, its category, which is Training, the quantity available of drift, how much it weighs, and its location, which is where we are. Using the contextual menu, we can choose the Recover option and recover this Training Beacon. We use the slider to choose that we want to recover one, which is the total amount available, and hit the Confirm button. To double check, we can click Hold to see the consumables within the hold of our ship. And we can now see this is updated to show that we are now carrying one training beacon. Now we need to deliver this beacon to where it needs to go. If we go back into the missions window and click the basic flight training mission, we can see in the deliver step that this beacon needs to be delivered to a merchant station, which is orbiting a planet called Rubrock 3 in the Rubrock system. This system is negative 0.5 light years away. So this means it's 0.5 light years distance in the negative position. In this case, we can use the Engage FTL option because we are traveling to a system. When we use FTL, this is going to use a portion of our charge. In this case, it's going to use 0.5 light years of charge. We have now instantly traveled to a new system. And when we enter a new system, it will tell us the system name, the faction owner, and any rules that we should be observant of. Now that we are in the correct system, we need to deliver this beacon. To do this, we open the missions window, click into the basic flight training mission, and scroll to the deliver step. We can see we are at the right location because the distance is zero light years, so we can hit the green deliver button, and we get an acknowledgement saying the cargo has been unloaded from our ship. Now we can do the next step of the mission, which in this case we need to simulate combat. We need to simulate combat in our current system, which is great. And there are two ways we can simulate combat against ships or structures. The first way is to open the helm window and then go to the system section, which is information about the current system that we are in. If we scroll down, we can view player ships and NPC ships in the system. For each of these, there is a contextual menu with an option to simulate combat. So we can use this option to simulate combat if we prefer. If you happen to have no ships in your system, you can also click into the tactical window by clicking the ship name and then going to combat practice. When you go here, you'll see various different simulation scenarios that you can undertake. 
Clicking in on these will instantly start a combat simulation. To complete this mission step, we simply need to complete one turn of combat simulation. Combat in text-based is both turn-based and card-based. You will have 60 seconds to complete a turn, which involves choosing cards to play and configuring any weapons or using consumables. Once the timer ends and reaches zero, a new turn will start and the countdown will reset to 60 seconds. Based on the mission brief, we only need to complete one turn of simulated combat. So once this reaches zero and a new turn starts, feel free to hit the end simulation button, which will instantly end the combat simulation and complete the mission step. Once you finish a combat simulation, then the main interface of the game will then reload. It will reiterate the system that you're in, in case you forget, and then you can go ahead and continue playing the game as normal. We can already see that the mission has progressed now to 75%. So if we open the missions window and click into the basic flight training mission again, we can see the last step is actually to complete the mission. We do this by hitting the green reward button and the mission will complete. You can double check the rewards you gain from a mission by looking at your log. Your log is accessed by clicking the speech bubble icon on the bottom right of the screen and then changing the channel to log. The log logs everything you do in the game, including any rewards that you get from missions. In this case, we can see that we've received 12,000 credits and we have all the different craft skills realized. This means we can now begin buying ships of different roles, such as attack, defense, construction, mining, etc. If we go to the me window by clicking on a portrait and go into skills, we can confirm that these skills have been realized and we can see they are all at level one.